What is Sony 3D glasses? It's a freaking breakthrough! No, seriously, through lifelong friendship with computer graphics, I could remember only three milestones. The first one was back in 1995, when I switched from monochrome CGA display, which was able to show only four shades of grey, to a full-colored PGA with a whole lot of 256 colors. I still remember how deliberately cartoonishly colorful the game picture was back in the day. The next revelation dates back to 1998, when I got a 3D FX. And the last is this 3D HMD. The idea of head-mounted display is anything but new. In 1994, when I was dreaming about VGA, VFX1 helmet hit the market. Aside wonderful AKG headphones, it had two displays built in. Those were TFT, a cutting-edge technology back then, and sported 180,000 pixel resolution, which was somewhat standard. Just for comparison, more than 720p HD ready, not full HD, displays have a resolution of 921,000 pixels. The funny thing is, VFX was closer to virtual reality than the Sony product, and head tracking is the reason. It registered head movements of the wearer and with a noticeable but tolerable lag adjusted the image accordingly. Sony's helmet doesn't have a gyro, but as it glows, maybe they could utilize the same camera technology in Move Controller to track the glasses position. Anyway, you could imagine that a couple dozen years back, even the mere fantasy of getting a V-fix caused massive wet emissions in shooter and simulator lovers. However, the helmet was ahead of its time, and after third revision, the company ceased production. This is quite common in the IT world. For instance, in the early 1980s, the home video game giant Atari released CX-42, the world's first commercially available wireless joystick, and failed, as well as Nintendo, which released the notorious Power Glove in 1989, or the early tablet Gridpad, released in the same year, from which Apple, which is treated as an inventor of the tablet PC for reason unknown, took many ideas for their Newton, released four years later, and also failed. The market was just not ready for such innovation. In that sense, Sony is in a far better position, as there is plenty of 3D content now, as well as customers desire to view it. But there is a definite lack of technology to deliver it. Apart from shaky attempts to create a 3D screen which doesn't need special glasses to view it, two main technologies are readily available for the consumers. The first one works best in cinema and home projectors and requires specially polarized glasses that separate images for left and right eye from a joint on screen. Another one is for displays and requires special shutter glasses to operate. The TV screen alternates between images for left and right eye, showing only one at a time, and the glasses shut the right or left eye accordingly, so that only the correct one will get the required picture. This technology is also a couple dozen years old. In the late 90s, some NVIDIA video cards came bundled with very similar shutter glasses, and the biggest concern was to find a CRT monitor capable of producing 120Hz output at a decent resolution. The thing is, the glasses cut the refresh rate in half, meaning each eye receives only 60Hz out of 120, and if this value is below 60, the screen starts to flicker noticeably, causing severe headaches after minutes of use. It's fair to say that the headaches are also a problem with today's top-of-the-line 3D TV and most impressive 3D cinemas because the technology is rotten. Sony's 3D glasses has none of these issues for the very simple reason. Each eye has a separate display and receives a very own, uninterrupted feed. In this sense, it doesn't differ from prescription glasses, binoculars, or those devices you used to view stereo photographs when you were a kid. Nevertheless, Sony's 3D glasses are a product for enthusiasts. Unlike a 3D cinema, where you just snap on the glasses and enjoy your popcorn, these glasses require rigorous calibration exactly for the user, or the 3D won't be so immersive. Rigorous doesn't mean hard, you just stick to certain rules. The lower belt must be on the hind head, not on the top of the head, and the front pad must be on your forehead. All the weight is supposed to be on this pad, not on your nose, this is extremely important. By playing with pads of different size and their position, adjust the distance between the displays and your eyes, and by moving the lenses, adjust the distance between left and right eye. When you are done, you are free to go. Of course, this is more like jerking off, since others won't able to share the pleasure with you. And in general, this is more of a personal, single-owner device, as it must be readjusted for new user, which is not exactly convenient. As for the headaches, there are none, but at first you may feel a little seasick as your vestibular needs some time to adjust. You'll be good after a couple days of usage. So, if you have a strong desire to get one, you have to pick a model. Of course, many other products are available, but most of them are ill-designed and poorly made. There is really no alternative to a Sony, as for now. 
Sony offers two products, HMZ T1 and the new HMZ T2. Which one should you get? The choice is not that easy. There is a price point. The first model is pricey, but the second costs twice as much. So what benefits are in store for you if you pay double? Well, the official site markets the new model to provide full high-definition images. For any sane person, full high-definition is Full HD, 1080p or 920 on 1080. It's not. The actual resolution is 720p, exactly as in the first model. You don't have to read the rest, but we'll finish anyway. The main difference from the first model is that the second weighs 20% less. How exactly did it lose weight? By sacrificing quite decent open headphones. The second model has earphones. Apart from the obvious hygiene issue when used by whole family, the sound will be very unimpressive, since while the first model offers 1000 mW of power, the second is 10 times weaker with only 100 mW of power. That reads say goodbye to massive explosions and realistic gunfire. So for twice the money, you basically get the same product with downgraded features.